the other thing that relates to what Ty was saying is we'll go over grammar and they'll say, well, why is that correct? And, and I'll go through the explanation and they'll say something like, we don't talk like that. Yep. I'm like, yep. you have to write differently than you talk, exactly. which is so alien and I can't get them to and make that's, that leap. Exactly. No, and that's an excellent thing. And that's what a lot of study I'm doing too, is that yes, academic writing is very different than speaking. And so I think if we just put that out there, is that it is something in and of itself, and it's not something that you're born knowing how to do. I mean, speaking, and, but again, that's also why teaching writing is so difficult and such an ideologically complex, too, and that idea of literacy, right, and what does it mean to be literate? Is it, because people are speaking and using their own language and um, using their own forms of words and rules and all that all the time, and so when you're talking about the academic language and academic writing, it's something in and of itself, and it has its own rules, and for me, I, I have just said, okay, because I can get into the whole ideological thing and what are we asking students to do, it's still something important to think about, but I've also, if I can approach it and just say, okay, this is a different language, it's almost like math in a, or something, right? It has its own thing and it has its own forms. The difficulty, though, is that it's all, you're, spe you're not, well, I won't tell you about math, but you're speaking all the time, and so language is always there, so it's hard to divide it that way. But yes. it can use it as more word awareness or second, yeah. Yeah, I, I like to use the words like formal and informal. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Appropriate and yeah. inappropriate. Yeah. Like you know, when we're when we're around friends and family, and if it's like a casual occasion, we're dressing casually. You know, those of us who go to church, but many, some of us <laughs> used to be a long time ago, more people would dress up, but now we dress casually for church. But but people would dress formally for church, right? So this it's the same thing with speaking. You know, around friends and family, we can speak informally. But when we're writing an essay, when we're at a job interview, then we want to speak more formally. And, and so they need to learn, you know, what is the language that we use when we're, when we're in formal situations, and when is it okay to use informal language, right? And so it's, it's a difference between not right and wrong, but appropriate and inappropriate, right? Okay, we got a couple. Let's say, a, you, you got the mic just I'm sorry. Yeah. I was going to speak for Ty. Ty, uh, and, and, and speaking towards what you're saying, Ben, is uh, she creates a word wall of words that you cannot use in her classroom, okay. like mo and like sun per se or whatever. These are words that you cannot use in her classroom. So she creates that, that there's that, the informal words, you cannot use them in her classroom. So she creates that formal structure inside of her class. So okay. therefore, I think in terms, it, it helps them with writing and, and knowing that this, even though you might be dressed casually coming right. to school, you're, going, you're, you're, you're entering a formal, a formal place. So therefore, you're going to speak formally. So okay. I mean, even as far as like, um, I haven't necessarily taken this from, I have more of a more low key type structure in my classroom. But like she, I mean, you can't even walk across her board. Like you have to walk around type thing. But setting them, setting them uh, professional boundaries up right. it, within your space is going to create a more formal environment. Sure. So that's, so that's a, and that's a way to you're doing word consciousness, right? It's not. It's teaching. It's reflecting on words and when do I use words here and when do I use them here and why not? Or it's, so it's I don't already that. Let them say what up, hi. Then that's I a say preference. Good morning. Okay, and I'll so say good morning fifty times. Until they <laughs> say say good morning. Today. <laughs> because okay. I need you to understand that I'm okay. your instructor. Right. And, uh, I right. love you. You know, we're casual a lot. Sure. But I need you to understand where you are. Yeah. And it's more. I, it's not because a lot of times they think it's okay. You know, street versus mm -hmm. what. I, you know, I tell them it's all about communication. Yeah. I'll come in and I'll speak Spanish on purpose. Mm -hmm. and then they're like, what, what? And I'm like, no problem. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what, what? You don't understand me. I, you can't, you don't know what I want you to do because we're not communicating. Okay, and When great. you speak yeah. in languages, which you let, is a language right. Sorry. that you, that other people can't understand, you mm -hmm. just have to, when you're in certain situations, you have to speak a language that the people you're talking to mm -hmm. understand. Okay. There's nothing right. wrong with your language. You just have to speak it with the people that understand you. And if people okay. can't yeah. understand you, you're not communicating. Okay, yeah, so just so all of this is what it brings up the idea of, of language, what language is, I, identity right. and language, all those other things. It's a host of, a host of things, right? And there was another. Yeah, I just wanted to say, again, just as a resource, um, code switching, if you, you know, don't really know what that is, look it up, research it, especially if you have African American and Latino Americans in your um, classrooms, it is imperative that you know that what that theory 
theme concept is and use it. So code switching um, is really what we're, we're talking about here, going between the formal and informal, going between how you write versus how you speak in certain um, areas and instances. Um, and it's a way to present it in a way that does not degrade how yeah. they speak to you know, say this is the right way or the wrong way. Um, and it gives them that, that knowledge. Um, as an African American, when they, you know, if they see me on the street, it's completely different from on, in, when I'm teaching or, you know, being an administrator. And that is imperative that they see that. Um, and so it may be to them, quote unquote, talking wh white or whatever you, you know, they want to kind of put it as. But I think that when, if you know and understand code switching, um, it helps you bring in a vocabulary um, and a basis for everyone. Um, one thing that I do is allow people to write the way that they want to write. Write this to your sister and write this to your teacher. And it has to say the same thing. It has to say, it's not too different. You're not talking about, I don't know, food to your sister and talking about social studies to your teacher. No, it's the same exact paragraph. But now switch that to how you would do it for your teacher, your boss, your mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And that l allows those conversations to happen. Yeah. That's a great lesson. Yeah. That's a great yeah. thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> so did I, was there any other hand raised? I didn't want to miss anyone. Or do you want to, yeah. Let's see. Uh, regarding the uh, informal words that mm -hmm. students use, what I do in the classroom, I have students write those informal words in one, in one column. Mm -hmm. And write the appropriate academic words on the other column, Great. and they keep it with them, and they have to, you know, refer to that when they are writing. Okay, okay, great, yeah, and that's here, one here, and then. I think that one thing that people are forgetting in teaching writing is not necessarily. I mean, it is all that what everyone said here, mm -hmm. which is code switching. It's formal versus informal. It's practice. It's all that, but. A lot of the times, it's not that they don't want to or that they can't. Um, it's just that they don't know the words. Mm -hmm. They haven't been taught vocabulary that is the, the tier two and the tier right. three. They'll, they'll see it. They'll, they'll see it in, in paragraphs or, or what have you. But they don't know what those words mean because no one has taught them. Mm -hmm. So vocabulary development is probably the first step. Before you teach all that fancy writing, you need to teach vocabulary. And it sounds really basic, but it's actually what's keeping most of these individuals from writing more eloquently in what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. Because if they had access to all that vocabulary, and a, you know, just beyond knowing how to morph a word, it's really another word for a colony, a settlement. You know, that, all those um, sort of vocabulary um, just development mm -hmm. is that w what everyone needs in whatever language it is. Mm -hmm. So because they're adults doesn't mean that they already should have it somewhere in store in storage. Yeah. And then now you're just teaching them a way to write it mm -hmm. better. No, it's like really they don't know it. Yeah. So we need to teach lists of words and lists of um, um, uh, what do you, synonyms and antonyms and all that sort of stuff yeah. because. Okay. They don't have that. Right. Yeah. So, so let's. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, really talking about explicit instruction of this, right? And a way to do it then that also kind of that doesn't do the skill and drill of the grammar books. Okay. We need, some, we need a little bit of everything, right? But really trying to think about how do you teach grammar? How do you teach vocabulary to improve writing? And it's not even to improve writing. What I'm, is that academic writing, too, it's you're t discussing abstract concepts, you're s talking about word or, or ideas that you need the vocab, you need academic vocabulary and nominalization and things like that in order to get those ideas across. Street language, everyday language isn't going to do it. That's what makes it so goddamn hard, because it is hard. I mean, I'm writing my dissertation. It is hard. I believe it is so worth doing because you start somewhere, you write your way into it, you struggle, you try to find the right word, you find it, tears and all that later, and you're somewhere else. And that's very, for myself personally, it's very empowering. And that's what I want for our students. It's hard. There's no getting around that, right? There's no quick fix thing. But that's kind of the beauty of it as well, right? It's worth doing because you're going to find yourself someplace else that no one else can give to you. It's your own thoughts.